Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. It is time for another Upcycled Fashions video. I have been trying to come up with some creative ideas for the clothing that you guys have sent me so far, and I'm telling you, it's like I, when I go to bed at night, I just can't wait. I just lay there, I listen to ASMR sounds, and then I just try to imagine things that I can make. And it's hard, because I am quite limited with my talents. <laughs> I have no dressmaking experience at all. Everything that I have sewn is just very simple cuts. I mean, I have done like set in sleeves and things like that, but it's been a while. I went through the clothing and for this transformation I have picked two garments out of Ben and Jason's stash that they sent me. Hi Ben and Jason. They're from New York. They sent this awesome shirt. What I love about this shirt, first of all, long sleeves, gives me some extra fabric, and I love the floral print, but I love the colors in it. They're just so earthy, and I just like it very much. I was looking for two pieces that could go together so that I could make something bigger, and when I saw this, and in that bag also had this tank top, the colors go together well. This color shows up in these little flowers so somehow I am going to put a shirt and a tank top together and hopefully make something. At this point I have really no clue. I mean I know I'm not making pants we can rule that out so I don't know I'm thinking either a dress or a skirt. I don't know really how much fabric I will have so if I need to pull from my stash of fabric I will because I really want to get rid of a lot of my fabric. Tons of fabric. So I just have to get to the sewing table and think a lot. I might have to think the rest of the night but what I like to do is at least record my intro because once the intro is recorded there's no turning back in my world. I have to move forward with this task and as soon as I have decided what I'm going to do I will take you over to my sewing center and we will get started. Hi everyone! It is the next day. I slept on this all night and I thought I had an idea. I was inspired by a video that I saw, but I'm going to save that idea for a different shirt that also came from Ben and Jason. So for this shirt, I am going to do a skirt and I'm going to be using these two garments and I want to incorporate the buttons for the front of the skirt. I also want to incorporate and keep this pocket. This is by far any kind of professional sketch. But I just needed to know how many panels I could get out of this clothing and how many I was going to need for the skirt. So here's the panel in the front that's going to have the buttons and then it's going to have two of these panels next to it and then on the sides will be the floral fabric again and then in the back two of the, I'm going to call it like I don't know, fuchsia, and then another floral in the back. I'm going to start by taking this shirt apart. For now, I'm only using the front because I want the little glittery. I want four strips about five inches wide and as long as I can make them. I just folded this over in half and then in half again and I'm going to just try to cut my four strips all at once. Okay, I'm just going to put these aside. Now let's tackle the shirt. I buttoned the shirt. The buttons are going to be my center point. So I'm just going to measure from the button, the center of the button to the end of the pocket is seven. I need some seam allowance and some wiggle room, so seven and a half. So that means I'm going to need seven and a half on this side and also on this side. I also want, obviously, to keep the top of the pocket. When I cut my panels, I will have some kind of a waistband attached so I can't cut too close to the button. So if I cut to about here, that's going to leave me seam allowance to let this button still work. So. Oh, and I also want to make sure I can get at least like 16 to 16 and a half inches. Oh, I've got no problem with that. Now I'm just going to do a rough cut just to 
make this a separate piece of fabric so I can fold it and measure better. And as for the length, that doesn't matter right now. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Other half. And again, I don't have to worry about the length at this point. I am cutting it close for fabric for my panels. I know I can get two 10 inch panels from the back and I want them to be at least 16 long. Then that's going to give me enough fabric across the upper back to create another panel. So let's see, even if I go to here, that will definitely, oh, but I need 10 inches, so that's not going to work. Well, it looks like I'll be somehow using the sleeves to create my last panel. So let's just start with the two that I know I can get. I have two panels, approximately 10 by 16. I need one more panel. I have absolutely no choice but to use a sleeve. Now, I still have to have fabric for a waistband out of this fabric, too. Oh, well, we'll worry about that when we get to it. I'm just going to take this sleeve out. All right, what kind of a disaster do we have here? I'm going to press it. I do not want to touch the other sleeve because I think I'm going to need that sleeve for the waistband. I'm hoping I can make a waistband out of the sleeve. So I'm going to have to cut a 10 by 16 and a half ish piece of fabric out of this. It means that some of this part of the cuff is going to have to be on that panel. And I think, why not? That's okay. It'll look like it was meant to be there. I don't know if I should make it be so that the button stays. I guess I could if I'm going to have something weird on the back panel of a skirt. I might as well have it be very weird. And it could be at the bottom and it could almost be like a little kick, only it won't be in the center of the skirt. It'll be to the side. Why are things so difficult? Well, let me just cut and I'll show you what I decided on. So I have a piece here, approximately 10 by, it's actually like 10 by 17. And I have declared that it's going to be a new fashion statement <laughs> to have a slot with a button somewhere on your skirt. <laughs> okay, we are ready to put these panels together. Here's what we're going to do now. We are going to lay out the pieces I don't care about the bottom of the skirt matching, only the top. Here's my center. I don't have to button it at this point. So it's going to be this, and then one of these on each side, and then I'll be putting a side piece on each side, and so on. After the side pieces will be another pink piece, and then that back piece. I'm just going to start by taking this piece, putting it on here, and doing a straight stitch all the way down. Then I'm just going to do that to each piece. That part was super easy and went smooth as silk. Now this does not look anything like a skirt yet. And I'm going to stop here, I think, for tonight, because I have a mail opening video that I have to record, and I have to do a few other things. As much as I would love to just keep working on this, I have to put it aside to get some other things done, and we will continue with this either tonight or tomorrow. It is the next day, but I think I'm wearing the same shirt, because it wasn't dirty. It was the quickest one I could grab. We left off after putting these panels together. Now what I want to do is start doing my pleating, but let's go ahead and even this up here so we can trim the hem and the waist. So I just laid this out as best as I could. 
think I'm going to fold it one more time so I don't have to cut such a long strip. First, what we're going to do now is gather this skirt. I have decided that this is going to be way easier to show you if I go ahead and pin this. I am working on the top of the skirt. See how the pocket is right here? So this is the top. You just want to make sure you're working on the top. I'm going to like just kind of eye where the center is here of this, what I am calling pink, because I don't want to say fuchsia. It might not even be fuchsia. It's probably plum. I don't know. I'm going to take the floral fabric and just bring it over to about the center. I'm going to pin that right there. I'm going to do the same with the other side. I'm just going to pinch it and bring it over. You can almost like overlap a little tiny bit if you want. There. I'm just going to do that for each pleat. No need to do anything with the two ends because those are going to tie together with the buttons of the shirt. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew down all along this pleated side. Now the skirt is pleated and I have to decide what I'm going to do about a waistband. Now obviously the waistband has to be as wide as this skirt. I have a sleeve to work with. The other piece I have to work with is the upper back. That's not going to be overly helpful. So let's go with the sleeve. I'm going to cut that sleeve off and I'll be right back. Out of the sleeve I was able to get two long pieces and the widest I could make them was four inches wide, but the two together will not be long enough. So I cut another piece out of the back of the shirt, the upper back. So now I'm going to sew these three together, and that's going to be the beginning of the waistband. If I fold this in half, you see we have more than enough waistband. Now I have to decide how I'm going to do the casing. My memory card filled up without me realizing it. So what I decided to do is I folded my waistband in half and ironed it. And then I'm going to be just attaching it to the skirt. So I have the skirt right side facing up. I'm going to put the raw edges of this waistband along the top of this skirt. And I'm going to fold about a half inch of this waistband in toward me. And I'm going to make sure that it's even with the edge of the skirt. I turned the camera off and forgot to turn it back on. I just stitched all along. But I wanted to mention that when I get to the end, I do have to leave an opening to pass an elastic through. But... Even if I fold this over and stitch along here, I'll be able to still maneuver my way through the open edge and past the elastic. Then I'll close it up after that. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim this and just go over the edge. We have a waistband. I'm going to go press this. Before I decide anything about the elastic, let's go ahead and hem this. I'm just going to double fold and stitch all the way around. We have to remove that funky button. And we keep it. Now we have a choice to make about the elastic waistband. We can have the elastic start, you know, right here from the edge all the way around, right up to here, so that the entire skirt is gathered. Or we can leave the front flat and maybe start the elastic here or maybe even at this pleat. Now I'm thinking like maybe here to leave the front not gathered just so the button part can stay a little bit more flat. Before I deal with elastic, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch right at the base of the waistband just to finish that off. I 
buttoned the skirt and it's seven inches from the center of the button to the pleat on each side. So about three and a half would be maybe a good place to start the elastic. So I'm just going to put pins. I'm actually going to put safety pins so I don't have to hurt myself. So I'm going to go about three and a half inches and just up here I'm going to put a safety pin. And the same on the other side. Now I have to decide how much elastic I want. I'm just guessing at this, and you can see my method is quite scientific. <laughs> I'm just thinking this is good for the back, and then this is good for each side. So about like that, which is about four inches, so another four inches room to sew. Let's cut it there. And I'm just going to open that part there that I folded over and get my pin in there. Now I want my end to go inside. I'm going to grab it when it reaches like this pin and I'm going to pin it there. Okay, the end of that elastic is almost to where that pin is. So I'm going to undo this pin, put it through the elastic to hold the elastic there. Now I'm just going to continue until I reach the other pin. I'm going to take this pin off up here and I'm going to pin the elastic right there. Now I'm going to uh, go through to remove this big safety pin here. I have no idea if this is going to work because I can almost swear I've never done this before. <laughs> and I'm going to have to find a closure for the top of this waistband. I think I like it not pleated in the front. I really do. Are you going to tell me I'm going to be forced to make a stinking buttonhole? Do I have any snaps available? Ugh don't feel like making a buttonhole, but something is going to have to close that. Oh well, at this point I'm going to go ahead and just sew the elastic down on each side. I just switched over to beige thread because I didn't want the maroon thread to show when I sew this elastic down. And I regret that I used the maroon on the waistband on the top stitching. But I was in the maroon kind of mood. What can I say? I have a little bit of the elastic sticking out on the side of the pin and I'm just going to go up and down a couple times to secure that elastic. Okay, I went up and down once. Now I'm going to remove that pin. Now I'm going to move over a little bit and do that again. And we'll go do the same on the other side. Now I'm also going to stitch this open end. You know how we had folded it over to keep it nice and finished on the side? Well, it's just flopping around there. So I'm just going to stitch here and stitch close along the cut edge too. Very nice. I'm going to do that on the other side too. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to cut a piece around this already made buttonhole and sew it to the top of this waistband. Then all I have to do is sew a button below and cut through the double layer and I will have a buttonhole made in what I think will be a very quick and easy way. I can make buttonholes, but on my grandmother's machine I would probably have to look it up because I can't remember. It's not as easy as like new machines that you push a button for buttonhole and it knows what to do. So I'm going to cut a piece with a buttonhole already made and that's good, right? Because I'm using what I have. See, I like this idea. This is going to be pretty cool if I can pull this off. <laughs> I just cut a piece of fabric with the buttonhole. I'm folding it down over the back side I'm going to stitch down. When I get to here, I'm going to fold this under and stitch across, and then I'm going to stitch up the side seam. And I'm just eyeing it to keep it in line with the other buttonholes, but I want it kind of high up. All right, it's kind of a funky looking tab on there. 
but nobody would know it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is take the seam ripper and stick it in the existing buttonhole to cut the fabric behind it. I'm just going to stitch a little bit on each side of the buttonhole to keep that raw edge of the fabric from, you know, ripping and getting in the way. We have a buttonhole. <laughs> But what I'm going to do is just decide where I need my button. I'm actually going to glue it down for just a little bit with a little tiny drop of glue. Not fabric glue, just regular white glue. Washes right out. Just going to put the button there. Just going to let that dry. Just to hold it in place for a little bit. Then I'll come back and sew it with the machine. Alright, that seems to be stuck there just enough. I don't want to hold it with my fingers while I'm trying to do the zigzag because I don't need to stab my finger. Now what I do is I take my little foot off. Just move that over here so I don't lose any of it. I'm going to do zigzag. I'm going to put the needle in the first little hole and I can just do it by hand if I want. Just go from one hole to the other. When I have big buttons I can do this just by stepping on the pedal and letting it run. All right, now let's go in the other direction a little bit. There is enough. I'm anxious to see how we did. Oh my God, look, we have buttons. I'm not in love with it. It's not what I envisioned at all. And it's just a short skirt. I think it would be fine over a bathing suit. You know, a good little skirt to bring to the beach. But it's just not what I had in mind. I don't particularly care for the waistband. I hate my lighting that I have in this room. <laughs> a light that has probably been in this bedroom since 1920. So it's hard for me to be enthusiastic. But I have to remember I am not going to be enthusiastic over every little thing I make. Because if I start to feel that way, I will not be able to do this series. Good things, I learned how you can totally just use a buttonhole that you already have somewhere else on the garment. That was kind of cool. It got me back to at least trying to make a pleat like the pleated skirts I had made before. So I'm just not excited and I'm a little sad that I'm not excited. So let's just hope I pick something that I like the next time. I started out liking this and I just feel like I didn't do the clothing justice at all. But I do like that there's a pocket on the skirt. I mean, it's a cute skirt. It does the job. It is a very cute beach skirt. But I'm tired now. I probably should have quit well before now because when I get tired is when I don't like what I'm doing. And so I am just going to say bye. I'm going to rest and we'll soon be starting another Upcycled Fashions. Bye! <laughs> I can't shake the disappointment of the skirt. And I want to tell you, not that I feel like I have to explain myself, but just for my own sanity. The problem with the skirt is that the part with the pleats, the way I used to make those skirts, the waistband is supposed to pretty much cover the whole hips. It's like I was supposed to have enough fabric to cover the hips and then that part with the pleating starts like around the crease of the leg and that looks super cute. It looks more like just a, a skirt with kick pleats as opposed to a cheerleader skirt that once belonged to Richard Simmons because that's what the pink tank top glittery thing reminds me of. So... <laughs> My problem is, is that I'm not good at judging how much fabric I need for a project. It takes a lot of fabric to make things. I will definitely try a skirt like that again. Maybe not with buttons and all that, but maybe just alter a skirt into a kind of skirt like that when I know I have plenty of fabric on hand. But this skirt would have been so much cuter if it was dropped and just had a nice, you know, upper part of the skirt and then the pleating starts. And again, I know I can't be happy with everything I make and things are going to turn out really horrible at times. They're bound to because I don't know what I'm doing. I hope you enjoyed just the same and Ben and Jason, and I'm sorry, I want to say Ben and Jerry every time. <laughs> 
I, I probably have said it and not even caught myself. I am sorry that I feel like I destroyed two of the garments that you sent me. And see, stuff like this, if I'm not happy with it, I don't even want to put it on eBay. But I should. I mean, I'll just put it up there. Maybe somebody will want it just as a souvenir. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm tired. Did I mention that? I need a break. <laughs> Okay, I just zoned out, so it's time to say bye. Bye. After being forced to stare at that disgusting piece of shit skirt throughout the editing, <laughs> I have decided that I absolutely hate it. I don't even like it a little bit, not at all. And I'm very sad that I ruined that pretty floral shirt. <laughs> oh well, better luck next time.